Well, 2015 has definitely been a big step forward for LGBTQ accomplishments. Marriage equality has been legalized in one of the world's greatest powers. Media personalities have come out of the closet to express their personal identities and sexualities to the world. And even social inclusion has been building its way up more and more lately. But really, we need to ask ourselves, has justice finally been reached? Has society achieved genuine equality? Or even, are we all cooperating on this? Transgender people in Brazil are susceptible to a 30-year lifetime expectancy. My very own country holds the number one spot in transphobic violence against transsexuals and transvestites. Words are definitely not enough to define the cruelty they endure, and not only cruelty, but invisibility. In the words of transgender icon and activist Laverne Cox, it is revolutionary for any trans person to choose to be seen and visible in a world that tells you should not exist. They don't have a place in a job market. Their only option is to make money with their bodies as fetishized play things, most time exploiting their own self-image as a vulnerability for the reward of ridicule and laughter. These people are laughing at someone born out of sync with their own social images, their own body types which possibly leads them to rejection and further separation from their families should be giving them the warmth and support they deserve. Transphobic people, on the other hand, will persist in thinking that they choose to live this way. Well, I would just like to ask you a question. How often do you come across a trans person? I bet it's not frequent. And I can list many reasons to highlight this cause, but only three can sum their absence in social contacts. Society sees them as criminals, as pathological creatures, and as hypersexual often. And as far as I know, nobody under those conditions is capable of having equal opportunities or even being considered a citizen. So no, they don't choose to live this way. Um, some would say that's critical. I would say words are not enough, but numbers are. According to the National Association of, Gen of, Trans Gen of Transsexuals and Transvestites, 90% of trans women are right now living their lives hopelessly and praying not to be murdered anytime soon. The name Veronica Bolina took over the news this year. Veronica was a transgender prisoner who had her body stripped, head shaped, and, sh and face destroyed, sparked outrage by the police inside of a station here in Brazil for the simple matter of intolerance. Whether she's guilty or innocent, transgender or cisgender, gay or straight, it shouldn't matter. She's still human. But don't you think society's the only one to blame? The government is supposed to have a crucial role in guaranteeing their quality of life, just like everyone else's when instead, the very same government makes life and human rights even more restricted for them. Apart from being stigmatized as mentally ill, transsexuals are forced to go through a minimum of four years of psychological and psychiatric assistance in order to have permission to define their genitalia. Quite often, as an excuse to avoid the treatment process, trans people are told they might regret their decisions. However, when it comes to choosing our future through political voting, it's just crazy how we're always in total control of our mentalities. And if that wasn't enough, schools are not allowed to discuss or even mention issues of gender or sexuality. I guess the state isn't as secular as it claims to be. I mean, many of religious communities have been treated with consideration, but what about the LGBTQ community's concerns? Do, we, do they even have any voice? Transgender people don't get to be called by their social names, they don't get to use the restrooms they identify with, and they don't even get to be recognized by their gender identity. And after all this, do you know what still surrounds me the most? The fact that even LGBTQ members don't get to embrace the G in their community. It's all about the G, the white, cisgender, elite of gay people in the world who play an incredible role proliferating ideas of sexism and misogyny against themselves, or who have an incredible, a huge impact on the economy, and who are barely aware of the diversity that surrounds them. May I present to you the asexual, the intersexual, the gender fluid, if you prick us, do we not bleed? If you mock us, do we not feel shame? And if you oppress us, do we not feel the need to stand up and fight for our rights? Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Leonardo Moda, and I am a homosexual. And honestly, once out of the closet, I thought life was going to be all about rainbows. But it turns out, we, the oppressed, have turned into the oppressors. And I didn't come with the mission of bringing regression or progress to my community. Despite all of our obstacles, I feel the obligation to exercise my role as an activist, be that by throwing bricks at Stonewall or by simply giving a speech to an audience like here. From now on, I want you guys to start questioning yourselves about your role in citizenship. 
My words may not be enough themselves, but with your help, support, and propagation of this message, we're powerful enough not to save someone's life, but a community survival. Thank you. that society is to blame and uh, so are the governments. Exactly. You also mentioned that we have to question ourselves what our role is in this process. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like you to uh, share with us a little bit how you would assess the transgender's roles in uh, changing their own situation. Are they victims of society and the government or is there something that they can do? Is there something that they are currently doing that you think is, is worth mentioning? Or do you think that maybe transgenders should also revisit a little bit the, the way that they position themselves towards governments and society itself? Um, so it's incredible uh, that they, it's really important for them to always keep the activism. It's important for trans people to gather and make, um, make unity, you know, they need to get together and. It's really important for trans people to join with each other and make uh, such a strong militants, you know? I think activism um, is powerful enough to save uh, their lives. Um, but I also think society should play an incredible role by just simply um, telling other people about um, what they should, I'm sorry, the knowledge they should aspire concerning transsexual or transgender people in general. The problem is, trans people are not recognized, they don't have visibility. So they, it's impossible for someone to defend someone, someone else, when you don't have knowledge as part of um, considering this other person. So it's really, really important for us to play our roles just by simply communicating. Okay. Question? Hello? So, um, what do you we have the most conservative, conservative governments is the dictatorship. And one of the things that has shocks a lot of people is that they are trying to tell us what a family should be. What would you tell them, those politicians, those people who exclude so many people from homosexuals to trans people, what would you tell them? I would tell them that they don't represent me and despite all they do, I will keep doing what I do, which is militants. I will defend my community to the very end and despite all the things you say, Eduardo Cunha, I will not care, I will not mind. You can throw as many rockets as you want to throw at me because me and my community together, we're powerful enough to make a lot of change. And I, I, I truly believe that. And I, I, I just have to say that you don't represent me. And I don't think, um, even if you can change my life conditions, um, I, won't, I won't let that happen somehow. Because we all know somehow what you do is incorrect. We all know a family is formed by people and not just segregated genders or whatever, you know? It's important for you 